Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I hope you had a great last session. Um, you, you're welcome to turn your camera on or off. We are recording this and this is going to be uploaded. So if, it, if it's a good hair day, then I guess leave your camera on. Um, but if not, you're welcome to turn it off. We are gonna be actively participating, but you won't need your camera unless you want it. So today's focus is going to be on purposely integrating technology um, in order to enhance student learning. So technology and math has a long history. Um, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this, but this was my first experience with technology and math was this lovely little professor owl calculator. Um, I don't know if you had that, like put a thumbs up if you've got that, if you had that, that was like my favorite little toy. Um, you would type it in and it would tell you if the answer is, is um, correct or not. So it was all about, like it would give you questions and you type in the answer and it keeps score for you even. And then we had things like Math Blaster and Compass Learning, which would kind of do the same thing. It was a little more interactive, but would kind of do the same thing. Yeah, I love Little Professor, it's great. And then we had Alex, of course. And so they had those little pie charts. That's when my own kids were going through school. We saw a lot of Alex and the question looked like this. So it was a right or wrong question. And there is a time and place for this kind of assessment, assessment of procedures, but simply looking at the student uh, answers doesn't tell the whole story of student thinking, nor is it really what mathematicians do. So they really engage in those mathematical practices. So this math and technology combination has always kind of had something missing where we couldn't really see students engaging in that. Um, so if we look at something like this, there's no collaboration or creativity, which we know is super vital in mathematics. There's also no ability to make student mathematical thinking visible. So we don't know why they're getting the wrong or the right answer on there. Wouldn't it be great if we had a collaborative way to engage students in mathematical reasoning with technology and they looked like this? Although that kind of bothers us right now, right? Just like on TV when we see everybody too close together. So uh, let's give them some masks and let's also move them far apart. So hopefully we will be back to this very soon. But in the meantime, we can still engage students in mathematical thinking with technology. And this is an awesome platform that I found and probably the only one that does this well with technology. So today you're going to experience collaborative and creative math through technology. And you're going to be looking at it through two lenses, both as a student and as a teacher. So we're gonna do a lot of student stuff, but then I'm gonna show you kind of the why and the behind the scenes for a teacher. Now, keep in mind, this is a sampling. Okay, so that's back when we had samples, like those Costco samples. We don't get to do that anymore, but this is like a sampling. So you just get a little bit of a taste. You're not going to finish completely a whole guess who math style game. You're not going to finish completely a whole activity builder, um, but you are going to get a little sample and a little taste. Now, I know this is a super crazy time. So you, you might just be hanging on. Um, so if you want to today, you just play and experience math in this creative and collaborative way. And then when you're ready to implement, um, we are all here as Mathtosis to help you do that. So the first activity we're going to experience and play with is guess who math style. So the game, guess who? So you probably know this game. And if you don't, it's, it's kind of a, a logic sort of game. And so you choose a person and then people ask you yes or no questions. Like, does your person have glasses? And then you guess what the other person's is. Now, with what we've done here, what this um, platform does is it lets you play guess who with math concepts. So you're gonna be playing guess who with different math concepts. And this is done in a synchronous fashion. So you need all of your students together because it's collaborative. So when you get there, you're going to get this sort of picture. If you know how to play guess who, you can go ahead and skip the practice round. You can go through it if you want to, um, but it will have a practice round where you choose a person instead of a math concept, just so that you can learn how to use the guess who platform. Um, students will do this first, like if it's their first time through a polygraph, they'll do that practice round. Now it's going to mention this word polygraph that you've heard. Don't be intimidated by the word polygraph, many graphs. Um, it started as a high school platform, but has moved down to elementary um, and is, is fantastic. So it will say join this polygraph, but really you're playing guess who math and you're playing guess who math with polygons. 
Um, so you can feel free to skip the, the practice round. So in the chat, you can either join, this is a new one, so this is different than what you had before. So you can um, go ahead and join and go ahead and join with Google. And it's either in the chat or you can type in student.desmos.com. you'll notice your names are anonymous and they're actually famous mathematicians. And what this does when you ask questions is it makes it so that you answer very honestly. Is there a way that we can, uh, it says talk with your partner to figure out when the misunderstanding happened. Is there a way to do that? Yeah, well, not right now, <laughs> but in a classroom, yes. Whoever that was, um, <laughs> it has not exactly three sides, but it has three sides and one more, but Ooh. it was yes or no, you know? So I was like, I guess I have to say yes, but. Oh, like right <laughs> here, is this the one? Uh, and no, we're the, the, the rhombus one. That. This one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Oh. Whoops. Okay. Let's play. <laughs> trying to do it on your phone doesn't work so well you only get a partial of the screen oh yes you it's not a phone thing you do have to have a computer yeah the phone it doesn't work really well with the activity builders it works really well in Chromebooks, um, which is hopefully what most of our students have in fourth and fifth grade, but I don't know anymore.
in about one minute, I'm going to pause you and you will be in the middle of the game. So I just wanna tell you that that's coming um, and it's okay. Remember it's a sample. Okay, 20 seconds. Ten seconds, and I'm sorry you're going to be sad. Okay, so this is the one thing I miss virtually is you can't hear all the students go, oh, like they, they want to keep going, which is such a great thing in math class. So I put on here um, all of the different, this is my teacher dashboard and in the recording, you'll see all of the things I was looking at um, as, as you were working through this and look at all of this, this great vocabulary that's in there. So I can see what the students are doing on here. This pause button is what I use to pause this. So that is guess who for math. Um, super fun. Let's see. And it's designed by a Desmos. So Desmos started off as a high school graphing calculator. They really wanted to make sure all high school students could have a free graphing calculator. Desmos has always been free and will always be free. Um, their pedagogy is just super great as far as what they would like to do. Um, you can use polygraph graph, not just for math class, but imagine using it for like states or events in history or types of literature. So polygraph can be used for more than just math. Anytime you need to make some of those yes or no decisions, you can use that for other things. And that's up and coming now with Desmos being used for more than math. So polygraph, you saw on there all kinds of vocabulary. Did anybody have to, you don't have to say, but did anybody maybe have to Google something like what, what is concave? Um, so the great thing about this is you don't have to tell students any of the vocabulary first. You just let them play a little bit and they might invent things like, is it dented in? And then once they do that, that's when they've had that experience and you can give them that vocabulary. They have that need for vocabulary and they want that. And then after they have that, you can um, just go ahead and play again because now they have it and they're going to make much more precise questions. You can also listen for what they already know. So you can look and see, oh, this person has pulled this out. And then when you have your class discussion, you can say, oh, somebody mentioned concave. What do you think that means? And then it's not coming from you. It's giving status to a student. It's, it's giving that student ownership over that idea and that um, mathematical concept. It's collaborative. Now, when with technology, can you be collaborative? So that's fantastic. You can collaborate with other people in class um, and you can even put them close together when it's time to do that and they can ask each other questions. It's also creative. You had to figure out how to ask your question. You had to, like I saw in there, does it look like a house? You know, <laughs> so it's creative. You get to figure out what to ask in order to be able to get your response. I promise no students are going to look like this while playing polygraph. They are very, very engaged. So you have a lot to do. So when do you do this? Like when is a good time to do this? Beginning of the unit is a great time to start this and at the end. Um, so it's fantastic. Wrapping up a unit is great. Um, rainy day recess, how about a math game during rainy day recess? They don't wanna stop. So they wanna just keep playing. And wouldn't this be great to use with buddies? 
how could our fourth and fifth graders help build vocabulary in our younger grades with their buddies? So it could be really a good time to use if you have buddies. The other thing is you could actually have your whole class together. So right now you only have half your class in the morning and half your class in the afternoon. Because it's virtual, if you wanted to do them all together, they could just sign in and do this. They don't even have to be in Zoom. You just give them the code and then they're able to join that. So we don't really have the opportunity for our whole classes to collaborate together, but this could provide that. We're going to go through just a couple of logis logistics and we're gonna do this kind of fast. Um, you can always come back to this part, but I wanted to give you a little bit on the how. So how do you pause it? How do you anonymize it? What does a teacher dash look like in assigning it? But don't worry, this is, this is something that you can get help with. Um, I am gonna go through this part really quickly because it's going to be recorded and you can always go back to it. So this is the activity pause. So I just click this little pause button and that's where you hear that audible sigh if you're in class. Um, this is the anonymize button. Uh, I, I really like this, especially if you have status is issues in your class, like the smart kid. Like if you're paired with a smart kid, you might not ask the question. So if they're seen as different, different ways. So this way you don't know who you're paired with. And all of these are famous mathematicians and they're from a diverse group. So they're from a diverse group of people. So it, it's really nice. And they said the most off topic um, off topic task while they're doing Desmos is they're Googling who their mathematician is. So um, assigning it, you go to teacher.desmos.com or you click on the Desmos teacher activity link. Now I've compiled a whole bunch of activity links that are grade level specific um, for fourth and fifth grade. So you will be going to those at the end of this. Um, you can have a class in Desmos. You do not have to do this, but if you use Desmos and you decide, I really like this, you can make a class in there. You just click manage classes, add a new class, name it, usually by year, I recommend by year. Um, and then you have this code. You can put this into Canvas. So you just put it into Canvas or you can put it in the chat and you will, um, you auto, your students will automatically join in if they sign with Google. They don't have to sign up. You don't have to do anything. It just automatically goes into your class. But you don't have to do this. So say you're on teacher.desmos and you're like, I'd really like to do a polygraph and I wanna see what, what kind of polygraphs I have here. So you can go just type in polygraph and a bunch of them will come up. You can look for the one you want, in this case, um, polygons. You can click on it you click assign and you can do either assign to your classes remember if you did a class but you don't have to or you can use the single session code which is what i did today and then in there you just get the student link by clicking these three dots um, what i've heard these three dots called because we use them often is we want more so i need more information here so you click on that get the student link and again you can just put that in the chat i usually put it on my canvas calendar when we're in person um, so they can just click on the link in the Canvas calendar and they automatically join. You can also have them type in student.desmos.com in the code. And what I love about these codes is they're not um, case sensitive. You don't need the space in there. Um, it's, it's a little harder to mess up than some of the other kinds of codes we have. So that is Polygraph. Um, I did not create this. This was from a bank. You can create it though. You can create those, but that's like the next level. So that you would want to join the TLC for to, to create them or meet one-on-one -on -one with a TOSA. So the second type of activity you already started actually um, is an activity builder. So you had that little intro activity that's different than the guess who math. Um, it's an interactive way to share thinking. You can do it synchronously or asynchronously. The first time you'll really want to do it synchronously um, just so that students can understand how to do that. So we're gonna go back to that activity that you started and um, you're going to go ahead and go back to that. I'll put it in the chat again. It'll take you right to where you were before um, as long as you signed in with Google. So it takes you back to it. So it's also in the chat and I've pasted you to a different place. So you can't see what you did before because I want you to start interacting with this section. I will open it all back up to you um, again when our session is over. So you'll be able to see all the other stuff.
And again, as you work through this, I am just keeping my teacher dash up on the screen. So if you want to go back and watch the recording, you can kind of see what I'm seeing as you're progressing through the activity. I put you all anonymous though. Um, also try, um, try to be wrong. So try on purpose to be wrong on some of these and see what it does. The feedback is pretty amazing. So like on, on your slide seven, like try to type in a wrong answer and see what happens. <laughs> I know, right? So that kind of feedback is not, it's not, it's wrong. It's, yeah. This is what happens. That's always my first go-to is to, um, in, with technology, what happens when a student puts an incorrect answer in? How does the student feel afterwards? Um, and, and Desmos does a pretty good job with this. The Desmos created activities um, as far as giving feedback that's, that um, is helpful for student learning instead of judgment. And in about one minute or so, I'm gonna pull you all to something called a card sort. If you haven't gotten there already. So just so that you're aware, but again, I'll open up this activity. Remember, you're just having a sample. Go ahead and pop in. I'm gonna go ahead and put you to slide 13. Um, in slide 13 is a class challenge. You can click create my challenge. So sorry, I'll open it back up. <laughs> So you just click create my challenge and then you can be creative about it. And after you've taken a look at 13, go ahead and move on to 14. This is another activity. This is actually how I started um, with card sorts. So you don't have to cut out things. And you still get that ability to categorize. Okay, so if you haven't looked at slide 14, go ahead and pop on over there. I know you're in the middle of creating your challenge. Forty minutes is very short. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I promise you can go back and create your challenge.
Okay, about 30 seconds and then I'm gonna pause you. Um, you can go back and do this. So I'll open it all up so that you can move the cards around and make your challenges and whatever you'd like to do with that. But in about 30 seconds, I'm going to pause you. Ten seconds. Okay. So um, you got to experience that activity, and let's look at what what that kind of thing does. So it makes the thinking visible. I can see what everybody is working on all in one time. It allows for creativity and exploration. So it's inquiry based. Um, it also can be collaborative, not right now, um, but, but I like to put two students per Chromebook. So they're working on this together so they can have that mathematical discourse while they're working. So this is in non COVID times um, where we pair them up so that they can complete the activity together. Uh, teacher moves. So when, when would you like to do this? Um, when students are problem solving and you want to see some of their thinking, formative assessment, amazing. So this is an amazing tool for this. Um, sorting, those card sorts are so great. Uh, summer, summarize learning. So you had a big long activity. You do not have to do um, big long activities. Yes, they could partner up using screen share and breakout rooms. So at several middle school teachers do that. Um, if your students are comfortable with breakout rooms, they can pair up and do that activity. And they can actually type in both of their names in the beginning. You notice they had a place, you had a place where you could type in your name. They can actually type in both names. Um, so this activity that you had, it was, it was big activity, um, but you can just do a card sort. You could just do um, a check for understanding. You don't have to do a big long activity. It can be just a quick, um, just quick learning experience for them. So we're gonna do the how, but we're, remember, we're gonna do that a little bit fast. Um, pacing, overlay, which is an amazing tool for formative assessment. Yes, it saves the results. Teachers can go back in later. Um, and we're gonna talk about grade level links. So this is the pacing, which you'll see um, and, and experience the pacing. It makes students a little bit mad. Sometimes I try to pause them on a screen that they can keep playing a little bit. But this is the pacing. You could either put them all to one screen, which is nice. And so they all have to stay on that screen until you're ready to move them on, or you can restrict screens um, to a certain range. So you can also change it at any time. You can stop and edit it. And then this is what I'm seeing on my teacher dash. I can see where all the students are. So you can tell if like somebody's not engaged, you're like, uh, Johnny, you're still on slide one and everybody else is on slide five. Are you having trouble with your computer? And then you can click on these little faces and it'll tell you who's on what slide. Not only that, you can see all your student responses at the same time. So this is the teacher dash. If I click on slide six right there, I can see all of the student responses. And if I want to see one a little closer up, I just click right on their name and I see exactly what they're answering. So it's great for that. Uh, this is an example of a card sort. So if you take a look at the card sorts, these little cards right here on slides three and four, the check mark means that they've got it and the X mark means they might not have. So sometimes they don't connect the cards. So you might wanna check that out. So this is what you see when you click on that. You see where all of the students are and you can click on an individual student and see how they're matching up the cards. So you just click right on there and see how the cards are matched up. So the card sorts are great and they're much faster actually than in-person card sorts and the cards don't get lost between um, between uh, classes, although you all have the same class, but I always lost cards. Uh, the how are you doing today? So you saw that for that social emotional check-in, this is great. Students will tell you all kinds of things in here. You will be very surprised. Um, all grade levels will tell you exactly what's going on with them. Um, so you can see individual students, but you can also do this thing called overlay. So the overlay is amazing because you can get a temperature check of your class at a glance. Um, your, yeah, your student dashboard, you can always hover over the person and tell who it is. 
So I don't usually show students the, the teacher dashboard. Um, I only put the anonymize for that last activity so that I could show the dashboard and nobody would feel uncomfortable. But you don't have to anonymize them if it's an activity. Um, here, this is a, a great overlay. So another temperature check of where all your students are. You can see their individual responses, but this is an overlay. So it's, it's really nice. Also checks for understanding. How did your lesson go? How confident do you feel um, about multiplying fractions? Um, and then they can answer this and you can see their individual results, but also the whole class overlay. Do I need to go over this again, whole class? Or do I need to just check in with these, these two students down here? So the information that you get on this teacher dashboard is amazing. Um, I can't recommend that enough. And then you have that um, continued, it stays in your teacher dashboard, so you have that information. Yeah. So I love this quote, doing mathematics should always mean uh, finding patterns and, cre and crafting beautiful and meaningful explanations, which most technology does not allow us to do. Um, but this one actually does, it's pretty amazing. So if we can just infuse that collaboration and creativity, um, we, we just need to be intentional about what our technology is being used for. But if we do that, we can create, and COVID is over, we can create classes like this. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and complete the last two slides in the activity, um, please. And if you're interested in more information on this, um, that's also going to be in there. So if you go to the activity and then at the end, that last slide is going to be some resources, but I also will have them in here as well. And I'll put that in the chat. So this link right here has an anchor page for today. It will have the video that we have. Um, it will have all sorts of collections. And then it also has just some really short videos that I thought might be helpful. Uh, if you wanna implement this, I am happy to help you with that. I'm a secondary math TOSA, but all of the other TOSAs are also help, happy to help you with that. So T and Jamie um, serve elementary school. And so you can contact any one of us. We're, all, we're very happy to help you facilitate this in class, answer questions, um, anything you need. If you're on social media, uh, here's some of our, our links. Um, I'm not really great at Instagram. I'm getting better. Uh, so that's, that's not where a lot of the information comes out, but I'm trying. So maybe by the end of this COVID time, it will be there. And now I ended a little bit early, thank goodness. Um, please stay on for questions. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer any questions. If you want a, after you finish those slides, if you want a little break, you're welcome to leave. You don't have to stay here until the very end. I'm so thankful for all of you. I know this is a crazy time. I know you're getting ready to go back in person. I know lots of crazy things, but I really appreciate you here because this is so not fun to do if there's nobody here. And I was a little bit worried nobody would come. So thank you very much. And any questions, I'm happy to answer questions. Let me see if there's any in the chat I didn't answer. I'm not as great about that until the end. I may have been one or two minutes late, Tracy. This is Kendra Jones, but um, is the activity builder the name of the thing in Desmos that we were just using? Yeah, so um, Desmos has activities and calculator. Um, the activities include the, the guess who game, the polygraph, and then, and then activity builders. So the guess who game is, is a little bit different. It's in the same place but it's a little bit different than the activity builders. So the activity builders, you just put slides together or use already put together slides um, for students to progress through individually or in teams. Um, and the polygraph so is where it matches. So that 17 slide thing you just had us trying, you picked the 17 things out of a bank? Yeah, I, I chose and I mixed and matched them, but you don't have to. There's already created activities. So if you look in that bit.ly link, you'll see already created activities um, that are ready to go. Like you just give them to students. You don't have to mix and match them. And all of those uh, things we tried today um, don't require 
making a student, um, putting students into Desmond? You don't have to make a class. No, you can do it just a, a link like I did today with any activity. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you just put a link in and then they join it. You do have to join like teacher.desmos.com, but you just sign in with Google. I mean, it's not anything okay. that you didn't do already. But will the kids' names appear in the dash for the teacher to watch if you just give them the link? Yeah, as long as they sign in with Google, their names will oh, okay. appear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have them sign in with Google. Um, unless you're doing like your kids are trained and they're in breakout rooms and they're putting the two names that are working or the three names that are working together, they change the name to that. Um, so unless that, but if they sign in with Google, it'll automatically go in. Yeah, and if you wanna try it, remember where um, all of us are happy to help facilitate the technology. I know sometimes with new technology, it's a little tricky.